Hey again, everybody. It's your old pal, Guardian Enzo, coming to you live once more from steamy Kyoto. Uh, on the In the middle of September, as I record this, still mired in the intolerable and seemingly unending heat and humidity. Uh, Kyoto, even in the days, centuries before climate change, was legendary as being a one of the hottest and most unpleasant places in Japan. Now with global warming, it's it's really off the charts. But this year has been, I think, the worst in terms of heat. It's it's, it's just every single day, 95 degrees, 98 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, over 100 a couple times with the perpetual Kyoto humidity in the summer. It's, it's brutal. Uh, ain't no two ways about it. Uh, but that is what it is. It's time for another season preview. And uh, I got just thinking as I was looking at this one which is a big one about the history of season previews at LIA and uh, by my count which I won't swear is accurate but as best I can figure out I think this is number 54 uh, 54th season preview for the record the very first show I wrote up in a preview uh, was in spring of 2011 it was Dead Man Wonderland and uh, I had actually read the manga for that one before the anime ever came out and it's uh, the 15th that i am sure of it's the 15th i've done a video companion along with two so uh you know a lot of history there as we know uh and i talked about that some in my recent pledge drive which for which by the way i'm very grateful to everyone who supported and uh here we are looking at uh fall 2024 which is one of the biggest seasons ever with about 67, 68 shows, uh, which is too much for anime's production capacity, as we know, but that doesn't seem to, to stop anybody these days. And it's uh, it's a pretty good season, looks like on paper, that kind of snuck up on me. Like spring 23, I knew was going to be a monster. But this one I kind of had in my mind as being sort of mid, and and then when I got sitting down to look at the uh, to look at the, look at the roster, uh, it actually has an awful lot. Uh, it has a couple sure things, and then it has a bunch of fairly high ceiling shows in the mid table. And so for me, uh, on paper this looks like a really good season, and this could be a really long preview. So I don't want to dilly dally too long before I jump into the preview itself because we're going to be here long enough as it is. So, as I said, 67, 68 shows, something like that. My usual percentage, as long-time readers will know, is one-third is what usually ends up in my preview. And sure enough, this time it's 22, so we're almost exactly on that number. Uh, the trend I noticed this season in looking at the schedule compared to most is that we have an awful lot of... Uh, we have an awful lot of serious looking shows now I, I don't like that word serious but we have a lot of manga tai show nominees and award winners a lot of uh you know tezuka award winners and nominees and shows about working adults and college students uh, sign in jose more than usual certainly um we have what i would for lack of a better term call serious themes in our anime this season which i think theoretically is a positive it still has to deliver but there's probably a pretty decent chance that it will at least on some uh as always when we go into these things i would i would say read this the read the preview on the website for uh for, for breadth where i talk about all 22 shows here it's really more about picking some of those number and going into more depth and and going going into more detail about why I rank the shows how I do. So as always, you know you know the drill by now. And the highest expectations category, as you know, is uh, is the highest expectations. Those are the ones that I have the, the the most expectations, if you will, going into the season. Some seasons I've had zero shows in that category. This season I've got three. Uh, it, it, this was a lot, big variable for me. It could have easily been two, and I could have easily stretched it to include five or six. But in the end, I settled on three. The first two were no-brainers. After that, it gets a little tougher. Uh, first one is Ruroni Kenshin, Meiji Ken Kaku Romantan Kyoto Doran, which those of us who love the manga know as the Kyoto arc. And the Kyoto arc is... 
for lack of uh, any other lesser term, one of the greatest arcs in the history of Shonen, Shonen in my opinion, in the top five. Uh, pretty flawless. It's already been adapted once uh, brilliantly uh, back in the day, but you know, we're if we're going to do a, a Kenshin remake, you're certainly going to include all of it. The whole idea of this remake is to get the Jinshu arc adapted eventually, which the Gallop adaptation and later which switched to Dean in the third season when it went off the manga never did. But in order to get... So Jinshu is the highlight of this reboot. There's no question because it's never been done and Gallop did Kyoto brilliantly. However, Kyoto is still phenomenal and anyone who has any affection for the manga is going to be very keen to see how Leiden Films does with the Kyoto arc. It should be great just based on how great that arc is. If you're familiar with the manga, you should certainly know how great uh, the Kyoto arc is. It's pretty close to flawless as a shonen battle arc as far as I'm concerned. It has so much pathos, so much emotion. The side characters are great. Uh, it's just phenomenal. So, my expectations of it based on how Leiden Films did with the Tokyo arc are they did a fairly by the books adaptation of the, of the Tokyo arc. It was good. The Ito arc, if you will. It was very good didn't really transcend the manga in the way something like the elusive samurai's adaptation has at times heavenly delusions adaptation did almost all the time uh it just did a good job uh bringing the manga to the screen most of the voice casting choices were pretty solid uh so i you know if they do that with the kyoto arc which is much better than the tokyo arc which is very good but the kyoto arc is is great then it'll be fine. It'll it'll be one of the best anime of the, season, of the year, although technically speaking, if it's two fours, which it certainly should be, uh, it will fall in the 2025 top 10 list. But, it, it you know, an adaptation of the Kiddo Arc should certainly be one of the 10 best series of any anime year. And it, it could push, if they do a great job of it, it could easily push well, comfortably into the top five, depending upon what else we see in 2025. So... My expectations of that are very high. Um, it's only because I've been a fan of Veroni Kenshin for so long. It was literally one of the first manga and first anime that I ever watched. It may have been the first manga and first anime I was ever serious about, because I'm not going to count things like Speed Racer in there, or, or Star Blazers, when I didn't really know what anime was. In fact, there are three anime this season that have a really sort of an important historical context for me, none more so than Rurouni Kenshin, which is one of the reasons it is the top show on the list. The second show on the list is Natsume Nujinsho Chichi, season seven. Uh, and I've been a fan of Natsume Nujinsho since I was really a serious anime fan. Not quite as long as Veroni Kenshin, but nevertheless, I have covered every episode, every OVA, every movie that they've done here at their website. And uh, I love Natsume. It hasn't always cracked my top ten list, but it's always cracked my heart, if you will. It, it's just a series I have a lot of affection for. Uh, I kind of view the, the, the Shinto depiction of this whole uh, Shinto, uh, the, or excuse me, the anime depiction of the whole Shinto mythology thing you have the cool side is Mushishi, which is more detached. And then you have Natsume, which is all warmth and, and emotion. Uh, and Mushishi is capable of that, which is one of the reasons it's so striking when it does go there. But the overall tone of it is very cool. And the overall tone of Natsume and Jinsho is very warm. Uh, it's been a remarkably consistent series for six seasons, despite the fact that it shifted uh, from... Uh, brain space to studio shuka i think before season six but it could have even been before season five i'd have to double check uh, they you know omori takahiro who is the director and really the main guy with the anime adaptation he left brain space for uh for shuka along with the main producer and a lot of the talent so it was a pretty seamless transition despite the change of studios You'd be kind of crazy to expect huge changes with Season 7. I think we know what Natsume Ujinsho is at this point. Uh, it's, 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 every time I turn on Natsume, it doesn't matter how long it's been since the last time I'm immediately transported back to whoever I was the last time I was watching it. It has an incredibly timeless quality that way. So to have it back, I mean, that's great. I'm not expecting it to... 
it's never the best show of the year. It, it, it never does that, but it's always pretty darn great. And there's usually one or two episodes that are off the charts great. Uh, my hope is that we'll get another Kogetsune episode. Uh, we haven't had one for a long time. In fact, we haven't had any for a long time because it's been seven years since season six. And why that huge, huge break when the manga continues to be a big seller, I don't really know. Uh, but uh, the little fox hasn't turned up in the manga for since, oh gosh, it's been a long, long time. In fact, the last time he turned up in the anime was, I think, season four, and that was an original episode. But the original episodes of Natsume have been among the very best of the series. It's, it's very lucky that way. Uh, the original episodes have often been better than a lot of the a lot of the core ones. So I would love to see another original episode with, with Little Fox, but I'm not counting on that. And the last show in the t highest expectations category is Aono Hako Blue Box. And Blue Box is uh, it's a Shonen Jump weekly Shonen Jump manga. It's a weekly Shonen Jump rom-com which has not been a category that's been a huge hit with me over the years, but I do love Blue Box. It's, it's pretty darn great. Despite the fact that there are characters in it I don't like, and it relies too heavily on rom-com tropes and cliches sometimes. However, the main pair, which is the boy named Taiki and the girl named Chinatsu, he plays badminton, she plays basketball, uh, both very well. I think they're an incredibly winning pair, and I think their relationship it develops in a very natural and, and, and in a very appealing, believable way. Uh, it's been a big hit for Shonen Jump. It, it really has been a big hit almost, almost from the beginning, really. Uh, it looks like it's going to get a pretty faithful, pretty competent adaptation from telecom animation film. The character designs, the, the art design looks extremely faithful to the manga, in fact. And Ano Hako is not a series you look at and say this needs a huge budget. It needs it needs a visionary director. Of course, it would be better, you know, if Watanabe Ayumu or somebody like that was directing it. But it doesn't really have to have that in order to be successful. So I think it's going to be just fine. It does have elements that will remind you of Adachi Mitsuru, but I think once you get past the superficial similarities, it's quite different. And one of the things I find appealing about Blue Box is the way it uh, is the way it manages to balance the sports and romance elements almost perfectly 50-50, despite going through stretches where one or the other of them will dominate for a while. In the end, they always seem to balance out, and and there aren't too many sports rom-coms that uh, that that meet that description for me. So, it's a pretty darn good series uh, by Koji Miura. And uh, it's a big hit as a manga. I suspect it will be a big hit as an anime. That's Blue Box, I don't know, Hako. Uh, next up, we have the mid-table category. And often in a great season, uh, it's the mid-table category that's the most impressive, despite the fact that the very top shows are in high expectations. And I think that's true this year. There's nine series that made mid-table. Uh, and, you know, there's some pretty darn good shows in here and some shows that could be great. Maybe material that I don't know the source material, but nevertheless, it has the potential for greatness in it. And also some sequels of shows that I really liked, which, which you know, I think that's important too. That, that gives you a higher floor. It doesn't affect the ceiling so much, but it certainly affects the floor. So let's look at mid-table and starting there with a show that I... You know, it's kind of crazy that it's ranked so high. This is Ao no Miburo. We know blue is a beloved color for manga. It, there's so many Ao titles in manga. In fact, there's three Ao no anime this season alone. Uh, we just covered one of them, Ao no Hako. Now we have Ao no Miburo, the Blue Wolves of Miburo, which is uh, kind of a fitting companion piece to the Kyoto Arc of Kenshin because this is about, it's kind of like an origin story for the Shinsengumi in Kyoto. Uh, if you did not know, the, the original name of the Shinsengumi is the Wolves of Miburo, which is an area of uh, Kyoto. And this is a story about a young orphan who has a, a you know, great hunger for justice. And he runs, a, he is passed across with Hijikata Toshizo and Okada Soji, who are two of the captains of the Shinsengumi. And 
so this really is the Chronicle. It looks to me like kind of an origin story for the Shinsengumi, like I said. Now, I have not read the manga. Uh, the manga does not get great reviews, in fact. And uh, it doesn't have a great staff. Maho Film is not a great studio. I will say on the staff, the adapting writer, uh, Ikihara Kenta, has a very good track record. But generally speaking, it doesn't have a tremendous looking staff. So why is it ranked so high? Well, I, I, you know, I, I can't justify it totally, but I can just say that, um, you know, A, the previews look really good, but also it just, this is a, as far as my strike zone, as a fan, as a reader, as a viewer, this really hits it. I mean, this is a show that kind of touches on a lot of things that really interest me thematically. So my feeling is, you know, I think this one has a lot of upside, but, I have to be cautionary. I have not read the manga. Not only have I not read the manga, the manga does not get great reviews. Now that doesn't always mean a lot, but it can mean something. So, you know, this is number four, you know, but with a, with an asterisk, I suppose you could say. And looking back on this, I could easily justify ranking it lower. For example, the next series is Dan to Dan, which, you know, that's a, that's a series I know. It's a series I really like as a manga, and it's a series that's going to be, uh, it's going to be a, you know, a, probably a huge hit as an anime. It could easily have been ranked even up in the top tier, I think. The only reason I didn't is because the last, you know, the last year or so, I've kind of gotten tired of the manga, which seems to be kind of repetitive in a lot of ways. But that said, it's seriously a trip. Uh, it's a manga, the, the, the author is Tatsu uh, Yukinobu, one of the many uh, Fujimoto, the Chainsaw Man mangaka. So many of his assistants have gone on to have a huge impact on the manga industry. And uh, Yuki, Tatsu Yukinobu is, is just the next on the list. Don to Don it was kind of an instant hit as a manga. It probably will get a big anime boost. The adaptation here is by Science Saru. Who haven't always done great work in my opinion but judging by the previews it looks like they're really really prioritizing this it looks fantastic and kind of the opposite of blue box down to down is a series that has to have a good adaptation if it's going to work it has to have good visuals it has to have flair it has to have style uh, it looks like this adaptation is going to have all that uh, it's an impact sort of series, and in that sense, it could be more impactful in anime than manga just by nature of the fact that the medium is more suited to it. Um, Story-wise, uh, I won't go into too much detail. I'll just say you'll have a ball if you follow it. It's basically anything, anything speculative, anything fictional, fantasy, sci-fi, if you can imagine it, Aliens, Mecca, you know, supernatural, cryptozoology, it's all Shinto mythology, it's all here. You, you, they've got it covered. They'll get to it eventually. If, if, it, if you can imagine it and it's not actually real, Dan to Dan will get to it eventually. And so it is a kitchen sink approach to that. Uh, it, it, some of it is just exhausting, really. Uh, just is it's constant visual trickery and, and, you know, if it's exhausting in manga form, I can only imagine it's going to be even more exhausting in anime form. And yet, it's also oddly exhilarating, too. So, um, and I do like most of the characters here. Um, you know, we've got, you know, kind of a, a bespectacled, nerdy lead and a, and a hot female lead. High schoolers, that's pretty typical. But then we've got a sexy grandma uh, and a whole bunch of other weird, weird humans and non-humans who show up. And probably the best character in the series is, is a yokai, uh, a granny. Uh, Turbo Granny is her name. She's probably my favorite character in the series. So, and she's inhabited a Manaki Neko lucky cat. She's she's a riot. It, the whole the whole series is a riot, really. I mean, it, it's a lot of fun. Uh, like I said, it it could be better, in fact, in anime form than it is in manga form. That would not shock me. So. Judging by the fact that Cyro seems to be trying to really hit this one out of the park, this one, it won't surprise me if Dan to Dan ends up being the most discussed anime of 2024. Uh, I will also say, you may know this, that several episodes of this were stolen, and there's no 
why why mask it that's what it was stolen from a netflix server and then leaked onto the internet i chose not to uh, validate that kind of behavior by watching them uh, some people did i won't judge you if you did the people who did were kind of universally of the opinion that, the, that it looks phenomenal however you know be that as it may i'm going in cold turkey other than having read the manga and watched the previous i did not watch any of those stolen episodes and i kind of wish no one had because that sort of thing will mean a lot of trouble for what's left of the fan sub industry and 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 i think as someone who blogs anime that would be a very sad thing for me so i don't think we should encourage that sort of thing next up chi chi q chi chi q no undo ni tsuite uh which is a kind of a funny one it won the manga tai show it won the seiyun award it's been nominated for tezuka been nominated for pretty much everything uh it's being adapted by madhouse uh it has a very good director shimizu kenichi who did kiseiju for them and uh sakamoto maya is playing the the, the the boy as the male lead and she's wonderful playing all roles but she's also wonderful playing male roles so it's all the boxes are checked the it's just that the manga i found it very interesting but i ended up dropping it and a big part of that was the manga is named uoto i have no idea if it's a man or a woman and the artwork the character designs did not work for me and that rarely proves to be a deal breaker for me uh but it was i never really got over it i must confess i'm not part of it with chi chi q that was a that was a problem um the story here is a i mean it's a fascinating story and an important one it's it's set in the in the middle ages in poland during the time when uh you know like 15th century that era and uh the so-called heretics who were who were trying to spread knowledge of the universe to learn about the universe how it worked and spread knowledge of it nicholas copernicus is one you may know um and the church branded them as heretics and uh executed and tortured and you know so it, it's a it's an important story it's one people need to know uh and there were some impactful moments in the in in the parts of the manga that i read there's no question about it but i dropped it so my hope is that with mod madhouse who don't do that much these days but when they want to bring their a game i think can still pretty much hit it out of the park uh if they really nail this and quote unquote fix some of the issues i had with the manga it could end up being a great series uh so i'm hoping that's what's going to happen we'll see next up oi tonbo the second season of oi tonbo the golf anime the one the golf manga that runs in a golf magazine and not a manga magazine uh, and as a golf fan who waited a long time for a real golf anime there were none at all for decades until birdie wing and that was a golf anime for people who hate golf i love golf so uh this really was you know a great breath of fresh air for me we've seen then rising impact come along which i also like uh oi tonbo is the story of a young girl on a uh, on a small island in the takara chain and the ex-pro who she dubs iga iga his name is igarashi she calls it iga iga and comes to the island to kind of get away from a scandal in the past and start over in his life and discovers she has a massive talent for golf and, and they have a great mentor student relationship um and it's it's really very charming and the golf is quite realistically portrayed uh it was really a lovely first season i enjoyed it a lot the only caveat i have is the final episode of that first season and this was clearly a split tour by the way so they're calling it a second season but it was a split tour um had a pretty big time skip a rather jarring time skip i would say and more jarring than big it wasn't that long but it was jarring uh and the the second season takes takes the series off of uh off of to the Takara Islands and into Kagoshima which by Kyushu standards you know after after Fukushima that's that's the biggest city you got so uh, that's uh you know it, it's going to be interesting to see post time skip and with a with a setting change uh how the series progresses i suspect it'll still be charming uh, it needed to do this to follow Tonbo's career as a golfer so it's perfectly appropriate it just with that big of a change you have to be a little bit cautious 
Uh, we have the final season of Beast Stars, uh, which is one of the better and more attractive CGI anime that I would point to. From the studio Orange, who do a better job with CGI than most. Um, uh, I like... I like uh, Beast Stars. Uh, I, I think it handles... It, tackle some pretty serious issues in terms of racism uh itagaki paru the mangaka uh she she she, she looks also gender politics as well uh and she does it by using animals as as the basis which allows her to get a little more blunt than she would be if everyone was people uh i did think frankly that the second season kind of lost its way uh, and it didn't appeal to me as, as much as the first season did, which is why I'm much more cautious about this, which they're calling the final season, and this not being Shingeki no Kyojin, I imagine it probably will actually be the final season. Uh, but, um, one of the reasons I didn't like the second season is because the, the love interest, the, really the female lead of the first season, Haru, the bunny, um, she was basically AWOL in almost the entire second season. I'm hoping she returns to prominence in the story, because I really think it's a better and more balanced story when she's in it. So uh, I, I hope we see more of her. Lagoshi is fine as a protagonist, but Haru makes him better. Uh, she makes the whole story better, and uh, I'm hoping we see more of her. Next up is one of the real oddballs of the season, Kimi wa Medosama, which is a series that, um, under normal circumstances, having re reading the premise, I would have said, oh, I'm not going to preview that. I'll probably watch the first episode, but with no expectations. You know, it's a story about um, a high school kid who uh, ends up with a former assassin taking a job as his maid. And, you know, she ends up being a total klutz, dojiko. And it, it sounds extremely formulaic and trite. It sounds like kind of the weekly Shonen Jump romance comedy that, that didn't appeal to me you know that's that's what it really plays as however um the director here is the name i mentioned before watanabe ayumu who is uh you know who is the probably the the top top director in working in anime at the moment i mean i don't know if, if he's not i don't know who is um he's he's quite a remarkable talent and um, I'm kind of more curious than anything what it was that drew him to take on this uh, seemingly formulaic rom-com, which doesn't have a tremendous reputation as a manga, as far as I know. Uh, and why is he directing it? And I'm hoping that by watching it, I'll find out why he's directing it. So in, this is a case, honestly, with uh, Kimi Wamedo-sama, it's here because of the director, and that's really the only reason it's here, and it's in the mid-category because of him. I don't love everything he does, but Ayumu, uh, Watanabe Ayumu is a great director, and everything he does is at least interesting. So uh, it's partly that. I know it will be at least interesting visually, and I'm genuinely curious if I can figure out why it was he's directing this when it seems so far outside of his normal strike zone, and he could pick and choose any any project he wants. He does movies now. I mean, so he can, if he's going to do a TV anime, one has to assume it's one that he really believes in the material. But what do I know? Uh, next up, Keikan Surite uh, Honto Deska. This one is one of my top sleepers of the season. It's a sign in romance series, um, which again, I did a, I did a commission on a bespoke piece on married couples in anime recently, and it was a slim pickings. Uh, this one is about a couple of young 20-something introverted people working at a travel agency. Uh, I'm I'm an adult, I'm introverted, and I used to work at a travel agency, so that alone has some appeal for me. Um, so you got an anime about working adults, you got an anime about working adults who, who get married. Um, the funny thing here is that the reason they get married is because the, the company, the agency, decides that they're going to open an office in Siberia okay uh, and of course the first people that are going to get sent to staff that office are going to be the singles so you know the two of them decide they're going to get married 
Uh, they're going to make a sham marriage uh, to avoid being transferred to Siberia. I'm assuming that love will bloom between the two of them, but I don't know that for a fact. I have not, uh, I have not read, uh, I've not read the manga, but uh, you know that's a very interesting premise, and you've got a, a really good staff here. Uh, both the director and adapting writer of uh, Tonikatsu Kawaii, which was the series that really dominated that that bespoke piece about uh, married couples in anime, because I think it's the best recent example. So with that, you know, with that creative team behind it, um, Ikehata Hiroshi, who is is the director, uh, but also the writer Hiodo Kazuho. So you would. That's a that's a show I look at with with that premise and those people behind it, and the manga is pretty well liked. I I suspect this one is going to be good. So that's kind of the definition of a sleeper for me. Two more in this category: Suma Shugakusei Ninaru, um, is again a premise that's really dodgy for me. It's about a, a, a widow whose wife is reincarnated as a as an elementary school student. It's kind of an ick premise, but. I'm told by people who have read the manga that it doesn't embrace the ick part of it. Uh, it has an, again, we have a really good director. There's a lot of good directors working this season. This one is Abe Noriyuki, who recently has done Kurshitsuji and Oku, the Inner Chambers. But he's been a, he's been a stalwart in the industry for 30 years. Uh, so with him behind it and the manga having a good reputation, uh, it'll probably be better than it sounds on paper and frankly it would be hard for it to be worse so that's what i'm going to keep an eye on with a certain curiosity and last in this category is hokaku shonen hanako kun part two after school hanako kun again this is the omaki comedy version uh the spin-off manga from jibaku shonen hanako kun toilet bound hanako kun now the main event here is the uh, sixth season of the immensely popular manga, which is finally coming in January. Why it took so long, I have no idea. It is what it is. This is very much the amuse bouche, if you will, but it's four episodes of half length comedy. It's fun. It's enjoyable. If you like the franchise, if you like the characters, it's a great way to kind of tide us over until you know until they bring the entree in January, which will be among the ten best shows of uh, next year, with, with almost with certainty. So that is the mid table. Uh, and then we get to modestly interested, uh, which some seasons can be full of shows, which are just complete shots in the dark. And there are certainly those on here, but there are actually some sleeperish shows in modestly this time. There are 10 shows in the category. Uh, there are some sleeper shows in the category that I think have some potential. Uh, so I'm gonna talk about more of these than I might normally, although we'll try We'll try to be quick about it because, you know, as I said, I don't want to, I don't like it when these previews go too long. Uh, but the first one in this category is Nanky Posy Angler, and it's first because uh, I see some sleeper potential here. This is an original uh, director, is a very good one named uh, Umemura Yutaka. He's a Gainax veteran. He's worked on a lot of good shows, even though he did do one of the abominable Kuli Kuli sequels. Um, as you know, I believe that on original series, the most important person is the writer. That's a, that's a writer named Suzuki Tomohiro. And as is often the case with original anime, you get a writer who's only done adaptations. So even though Suzuki is very good with adaptations, we don't really have a track record for how he will do with an original. That said, it's a story, again, about a college student uh, who is told that he only has two years to live. Um, he ends up almost drowning, not intentionally as far as I know, and then he's rescued by a couple of fishing aficionados and they get him hooked, pun intended, on that hobby. Um, and it sounds like an interesting premise here, uh, you know, with that director, could be good. Uh, that's Negi Posi Angler, might be the top original anime of the season, wouldn't shock me if it was. Um, next, I want to talk about Ranma One Half, which is... Uh, you know, I talked about Rurouni Kenshin as being one of the first anime I ever watched after I knew what anime was. Ranma was another one. I couldn't even tell you to this day whether I watched it on VHS or DVD. It certainly wouldn't have been Blu-ray yet. Uh, it's not, in my opinion, Rumiko's best work. It's not a, a series that 
I feel needed to be rebooted. But then again, I didn't think Utsura needed to be rebooted either. Uh, I will check this out. I, I, I can't say whether Ranma as a concept will work for me as the fan I am now. Uh, it kind of did 20 years ago or whatever it was when I watched it the first time, but uh, maybe. Uh, so we'll see. I mean, I remember I have some fond memories of that experience of watching it the first time, so maybe it'll recapture some of that charm. We'll see. It's also MAPA, which could mean almost anything, really. But it's interesting that they're doing it. Next one is uh, Rice Rice wa Tenin Tenin Tanin Ga I, which is a probably one of the top picks of my podcast co-host Samu. He's big on this one. Uh, it's uh, it's 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 a Yakuza series, although the fable has kind of softened my skepticism on those. Another sign in. Uh, this one is about a young mafia princess who is a very aggressive standoffish personality she's scared off every guy who's ever been interested in her her grandpa is the head of the local uh yakuza family he marries her off to the grandson of a rival gang as a peace gesture uh the the, the son the, the the grandson of a rival gang leader i should say and, and he turns out to be the husband turns out to be like an s m freak uh so <laughs> i mean uh, who knows <laughs> who knows with this one uh Sometimes I get what I call an anti-sleeper vibe, and I kind of have that with this. It's a well, pretty well-regarded manga, uh, but uh, it has a good director, too, uh, Kawase Tushifumi, who did one of my old favorites, Pita Ten, so you know he's been in the industry for a while. Um, but I don't know. i just vibing that this one is not going to work for me, but we'll see. I mean, I, this is one that, on paper, should be pretty highly rated. Uh, and it may surprise me, uh, and and just be you know, hey, you were you were silly to be skeptical about it. It's great. That that wouldn't be a shock if that happened. Uh, but like I say, sometimes I get that weird anti-sleeper vibe, and I kind of have it with this one. So there you go. Uh, next, I want to talk about Trillion Game, which is the second Madhouse show this season. Uh, and this one is about uh, an I another show about adults. Uh, this is one about a brilliant entrepreneur. Who gets a chance to join a massive IT company and get a huge, you know, get a huge package, a huge uh, pay package with benefits and all this, and he blows it off to start on his own and uh, Ray you make a trillion. And when we say trillion, he's talking about dollars, not yen. So it's a lot of money. Uh, a good director, Sato Yuzo, uh, old school director. Uh, Manga won the uh, Shogun. Shoga Kukan Award in 2024. It's very well regarded. Uh, so that one could be a sleeper. Um, we have a Mahjong anime called Tohai. Uh, you know, we've had Karuta and Go and Shogi and Rakugo. So, you know, you name it. Uh, we're getting one on Mahjong now. And I'm, I'm guessing there must have been a Mahjong anime at some point, but I can't remember when it would have been. Uh, this one is about a teen. It's kind of an interesting twist on this. A teenage Mahjong Wiz, okay, a teenage Wiz, you'd expect that. But he's hiding an immigrant girl who's in the country illegally in his apartment. And I'm curious to see how that combination of storylines plays out. Uh, nothing too exceptional in the in the in the staff here. East Fish Studio, not a studio that you immediately stamp quality on, although they could be fine. Uh, just kind of a taking a flyer on that one. Uzumaki, uh, of course, it's Ito Junji. Some people love Ito Junji. I'm not one of them. It's kind of weird with Ito for me. I like, if I'd read more of his manga, maybe I would understand the fascination with him because I know that, you know, it's pretty much believed that anime adaptations of his work have not been great. So that may be why I've never really gotten the fuss with him. Uh, but. Uzumaki, directed by Nakahama Hotoshi, who of course directed all of the Mushishi adaptations. Uh, maybe this will be the one that A, wins me over, and B, breaks the uh, Ito anime jinx. We'll see. It, it must be said, the only anime that Nakahama has ever directed that I really liked was the Mushishi stuff. But, clearly he's capable. So, 
Uh, then a kind of an oddball named Yokai Gako no Sensei Hajime Mashita, uh, which is uh, about a, a, a timid, you know, gun shy teacher who ends up teaching at a, a Yokai high school where the students love to prank him and torture him. Uh, I'm mainly interested in this one, frankly, although the um, although the manga has a pretty good reputation and Ono Katsumi is a good veteran director. The main reason I'm kind of interested here is it's Osaka Ryota as the protagonist, as the teacher. I think Osaka Ryota is great and tragically underused in anime these days. It, it's absolutely one of my tenets that Osaka Ryota should be playing male leads a lot more than he does, but he's no longer an it boy, so mostly he gets supporting roles. So it'll be interesting to see how he does here. He can do both very serious and zany comedy very well. I think it's clear he's going to be asked more to do the latter here. Uh, and I'll skip over the rest of it. There's a couple more shows in, in, in Modestly Interested, but those are really the ones I think are worthy of highlighting. Um, I'm definitely going to blog seven shows this season, which is right on the top end of where my that range usually goes for me. Uh, Kenshin, uh, Natsumi Jinsho, Shichi, Blue Box, Dan Dan Dan, Honan Hanako Kun 2, uh, Hokako Shonen Hanako Kun 2, Oitanbo, Beastars, so that's a lot and if you look at all the shows in that mid-table category you know uh chichikyu and ano mibaro and uh no uh kimi no maid i mean it's almost a certainty that a couple of those shows are going to make the cut too so it could be a pretty big could be a pretty big busy season for me as usual most of it falling on my sunday but uh, we'll see how that plays. My main sleepers for the season are Keikon Suro Surote, Honto Deska, uh, Negi Pazi Angler, and Trillion Game. And there are other shows I might call sleeper, but those are really the three I would, I would most attach the sleeper vibe to for me this season. Uh, I actually do have something in the OVA category, which is maybe the first time this year. It's certainly the first time in a couple seasons. It's basically a dead category at this point. But there is, I say supposedly because we don't have a firm date yet, and it's coming from China, so that makes it a little harder to get info. It's a donghua rather than an anime, but that's uh, another link click uh, side story. Uh, this is the Shiguang Dailiren uh, Yingdu Plan. Uh, I was not nearly as big a fan of the second season of Link Click as I was the first, as, as you probably will know if you follow the site. Uh, but it's still Link Click, so who knows? It could be great. It's supposed to come out in October, but I'm not going to be surprised if we don't see it. I, who knows? But the, the schedule is generically October 2024. Uh, the Yingdu plan. Link click Yingdu plan. Hopefully we'll see it. And one movie. Uh, summer is generally not the biggest season for TV anime and is generally the biggest season for theatrical anime. And I think that's the way it will work out this year too. Fall, not so much. Kind of the opposite. Uh, always one of the biggest seasons for series and not so big for theatrical. The only movie I'm choosing the preview this time is Fureru and Fureru is uh, about some again it's 20 year old well 20 year old college age kids uh, who come from a small island and now live in Takara no Baba in Tokyo which is my old neighborhood about 15 minutes walk from my apartment when I lived in Tokyo uh, and there's some magical realism elements because it's written by Mar Mario Kada and there's always pretty much magical realism with her and there's some kind of like island creatures who allow these people from there to help communicate, uh, communicate telepathically with each other. I don't know exactly how all that works. It is an original. This is basically the latest uh, gathering of the old gang from Anohana, which would be not only Okadamari, but the guy Tatsuyuki, the very, very good director, uh, the animator and character designer Tanaka Masayoshi. So the, and then other people who were involved, but those are the three pillars of it. Um, you know, Anohana and all the other series they've worked on, Anthem of the Heart, the other stuff they've worked on since then. Uh, so I'm very interested because, you know, I, I adore Anohana. And um, I think actually Anthem of the Heart is, is quite good too. Uh, so these three are always an interesting, interesting combo. It's always interesting to see what they'll come up with. Uh, we'll see. I don't have Anohana expectations, but, you know, with them involved, it could be very, very good. Okada, interestingly, was really, uh, she seemed like one of the biggest, the biggest stars in anime for a while. Uh, the probably, I mean, I think certainly as a writer, she was the hottest name in the industry. 
She even got even into directing a couple things. Uh, she seems to have kind of cooled off a little bit, but you know, she, you know, the old gang is back together. We'll see how that plays out. Uh, so that is the fall 2024 anime preview. And again, it's a big one. Uh, you know, almost as big as spring 2023, which is the last season of comparable hugeness and a bigger season even than this for me personally. Uh, slightly longer preview, slightly longer video, but this is probably the second longest video I've ever done on a preview because it's it's a really big season. Uh, I think there's so many sure things this season that it's certainly going to be a good season. If some of these mid-table shows hit what I see as their upside potential, uh, it I think you know the possibility is there that this could be a really, really strong season. And if it is, it could be the season that lifts 2024 as a year to being a really, really good year. It won't be as great a season as spring 2023, and it won't be as great a year as 23 was. That was the strongest anime year in quite a while, but it has a chance to certainly be above average if the season lifts it. Uh, 2024 could be, end up in the final analysis, quite a good year. And uh, as always, folks, I thank you very much for, for tuning in. I thank you very much for uh, reading uh, the preview on the website. Uh, please like, comment, and subscribe, as James May would say. And uh, I love I love to see your comments. Please, please feel free to leave those. I will try to respond to them if I can. You know, if you follow LIA at all, you know that I'm really, really trying very hard to make this site financially sustainable. Uh, so I always have to take this opportunity to appeal to you. If you like what I do, if you find it to be of value to you, I hope you will consider supporting us through Patreon or PayPal. Uh, or uh, or Kofi, any way you like. Uh, it, it really makes a big difference to me and uh, and keeping LIA and the LIA YouTube channel going, which is something that I really want to do if it's at all possible to do. Uh, and again, I thank you very much. Uh, I, I wish all of you the best. Uh, you'll be hearing from me, of course, in the weekly or in the bi-weekly podcast of episodes, which I'll continue to upload. Uh, I hope it's a great season. I hope you guys have a great fall. And as always, I leave you with the usual Guardian Enzo benediction. Thank you, Guardian Bob. Please stay frosty.